Hey guys, it's your boy BC coming at you with another uh, based LDS video. Good to have you back. Um, you guys need to help me with this one. You guys have to comment on this and let me know what your thoughts are because I'm struggling. Um, a week ago, the Washington DC Festival of Lights kicked off. Um, they light up the temple, it's beautiful, and they have two or three concerts at the, on the grounds um, at the visitor center running up to Christmas. Great time. Great time head by all. Um, here's where I struggle some, and you're going to have to forgive me for this. Because the Festival of Lights was kicked off by the rainbow. Um, the Washington, D.C. Gay Men's Choir was the headlining artists of the Festival Lights for, I think it was December 6th. So this has been a week now, and I'm really I'm trying to understand why, instead of just making a video and coming out and ranting, but I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. Um, and it's not because they're gay. I could care less that they're gay. I know dudes that are gay. They're just gay, and they don't. They're, they're dudes. Lesbians are lesbian. They're just lesbians. But it's when they are activists. And the Washington D.C. gay, uh, the Gay Men's Choir of Washington D.C. is the official name. On their website, they list they are activists. They are promoting a message. Now, they came, they sang Christmas carols, but they also sang two of what they call their standards, which they sing at every concert that they perform. And you might be like, oh, it's carols, it's just singing. They're not, well, but they are still activists. They are associated with the Gay Men's Choir of San Francisco. And some of you might remember them being rather notorious uh, getting a bit of notoriety, shall we say, um, when the whole end of COVID, parents found out what schools are teaching regarding the rainbow, um, and they made a video. <laughs> the, the the San Francisco Choir made a video of mocking parents for being concerned about the rainbow being introduced in school the way they are. Um, and they openly say, <laughs> no, I'm, they're tongue in cheek, but they're like, we're coming for your kids. Because <laughs> they are. I don't care if it's tongue in cheek, they're doing it. They're openly saying it. And they're saying it as a joke, so people go, ha ha, funny, but it's ha ha, crap, not funny. Um, you have the rainbow being resented at the temple at the same time as Project Veritas launches the videos with the dean of schools at that Chicago private school. I can't remember the name of the school offhand, but the dean's on camera talking about how he passes sex toys around to the students and they discuss their use and lubrication and spit. What works best? How? Why? Why is this being introduced? And these aren't college kids. And this is a private institution, $40,000 a year to send your kids here. This is happening when Maryland is introducing LGBTQ materials into the school system. Or I should say a school district, I think. I don't think it's a whole state of Maryland, but a school district, I, for, I forget. But, but at the same time, they're like, we're going to introduce these. And we're not going to focus on Amer um, American uh, introducing anything of American values in because that's white supremacist nationality. American patriotism is white nationalist. What the hell? 
Since when did Harvey Milk become a better voice for value and morality than George Washington or Thomas Jefferson? This happens the same time, and this breaks my heart. David Archuleta has a concert in Salt Lake, the Delta Center. And he stops the concert to educate the public on his coming out and his stance with the church, and he's left the church. And I understand he's left the church. But this is one of those proofs you can leave the church, but you can't leave the church alone. And he's disappointed that fans walked out, and he's disappointed that there were a couple of sponsors that were like, hey, just perform, please. You know, this gets to the whole shut up and sing, shut up and dribble narrative that the Dixie Chicks and LeBron James were prominent in. And in the interview he gave with, was it Good Morning America on ABC, he's like, uh, I left the church and I really had to deconstruct what, what the church was and what it meant to me in my life. And deconstruct is coded language. And he said he doesn't really identify as gay, he identifies as queer. That's a whole tag in and of itself that's sad and it's heartbreaking. Because I thought, I watched his video that he put out in January and he's in tears because he's at such a crossroads. I pray that he'll come back. I pray that he won't get lost. But when you hear deconstruction and queer identity, he's swallowing identity politics, wokeism wholeheartedly. I'd love to talk with him. I'd love to just see what's going on in his head and just pray that he'll remember what, what it is to be a follower of God. And I'll get into that in a minute here, but I'm stuck because the church okayed this. The church okayed the rainbow kicking off the Festival of Lights at the D.C. Temple. Elder Cook was there, remember the Twelve, which makes this all seem legitimate and kosher and cool. And now I first heard about this on Watcher Palmer's channel. Tip of the hat to Watcher. Um... And I looked it up, and like church news, I, I'm not a big follower of church news, so I may have missed some article somewhere, but the only thing I found was a passing paragraph. DC Temple, Festival Lights. And by the way, Gay Men's Choir performed. That was just, <laughs> that was it. But the article that was posted to the site on the Gay Men's Choir for DC was like, there are the, some members decided not to social members of the choir decided not to show because of what the church stood for and what they represented to the homosexual community. Okay. Others went, some of them former LDS, and uh, one guy is like, well, this isn't my mama's Sunday, Sunday sacrament anymore, which means he looks at this as the church is coming around to our point of view. And... Um, it's, the article was kind of hard to understand. I don't know if somebody else was had just left the church or if the event organizer had just left the church um, because they identify as gay and they, after a two-year struggle they just can't stay with the church anymore and I'm like they, why how did this how did this happen how does the church keep stepping on these landmines and in Watcher's, Watcher Palmer's comments after his video, there were a lot of people that were like, what's going on? Why is the church? It just feels like the church is bowing to the rainbow, bending the knee. 
and you don't bend the knee to Zod because Zod will kill you. Zod will put you down, doesn't care. Zod does not love you. So the church is bend the knees to Zod. Kneel before Zod. Zod's got a rainbow cape. And others, some people are just like, and so other people are like, well, this is, you need to remember that Christ ate with sinners and conversed with publicans and the church is just reaching out to everybody. And I thought about that. I did. I thought about that and that made some sense. But Christ didn't just sit with the sinners and say, well, all right, you guys have a good night. There was the invitation to repent and to follow him at every circumstance. There was no... In this article, no one felt a need to repent. No one felt like they felt like the church was inviting them to God. They felt like the church was coming around. The church was accepting. The church was loving. The church was... And you do have to love the sinner. But how far do you go to love the sinner? Before the sin is the problem because they're not letting go of the sin. They're not trying to. They're not working on it. And the whole world is burning because of these woke ideologies. And I'm struggling. I'm struggling to know what the church is doing. I'm struggling with who okayed this and why and how. And whether they're going to okay similar things in the future. And I get it. Like I said in the previous video, there's going to be some California bishop somewhere that will marry someone because it's the right thing to do. Even though the church does not stand for those marriages. And this Respect for Marriage Act, Biden's speech on that today was horrific and disgusting. And people need to know where they stand in relation to where the Rainbow Mafia stands. I mean, that Dil Dylan Mulvaney dude shows up, pretending to be a girl. If you don't know who Dylan Mulvaney is, bless your hearts, you're so lucky. YouTube, social, not YouTube, but a social media influencer who's widely mocked for being the very character of everything that's weak and simple and naive and dumb about women that women have been trying to get over. And then this dude comes out and pretends to be a woman in the worst ways possible, and he's applauded. If I were a woman, and I'm like, this is what this person thinks a woman is, I'd lose my mind and they invite the Biden White House invites the drag queen who recently performed for a two year old boy's birthday yay wink and a nod go ahead perform for the kids we are not sexualizing them And if any of you out there think that the, the progressive view is not to sexualize and demoralize and demean and corrupt your children, go to a pride event. Leave your kids at home. The left is it. The left is taking their kids. Go to a pride event. Pride event's not about being gay. It's about kink, fetish, and... And debauchery. It is. It's not about we're celebrating who we are. Please accept us. Yeah, that may have been the message in the 80s. It's not what it is now. Now it's we're out. We're loud and proud. Suck in America. I'm watching what's happening to kids. I left Colorado to get away from this crap. 
my point of view, I lost two kids to this crap. I lost kids to weed culture and tolerism. Accepting everyone because God is loving. God loves everyone. And if there's a God, no one can do any wrong because God loves everybody because nobody knows who God is. Church is true. I, this isn't one of those things that's going to make me leave the church. But when you know what kind of life God leads, and that's the kind of life we're expected to lead, to live up according to His laws, it is just so hard to watch the church give a wink and a nod to the Rainbow Mafia who is actively trying to destroy the family. They are. And again, this is not your average gay person. This is not your just... This isn't the Scott Pressler, the Dave Rubin, the... The guys who are like, hey, I'm just leading my life. I happen to be gay. This isn't that. This isn't those guys. This is the activists. And the church is like, you go, son. You go, girl. <laughs> Who knows nowadays? So I'm stuck. Because I'm trying to make sense of how this happens and why. And I do, and I do understand we need to love our neighbors, but there's... You love your neighbor, but you don't love the sin. And these guys are activists and promote the sin. And they're not changing. This is not a call for them to repent and come under the church and build bridges. That's not what these guys are about. Anyway, hey, leave some comments. What do you guys think? Where is there a line being drawn? Is is there a line? Has the church thrown in a towel and been like, okay, we're not going to change, but world, you go right ahead. And I kind of understand that because the world has to get so wicked. The world's going to get more wicked. We can't stop it, but we're not supposed to just stand idly by either. And this to me is so standing idly by. Even clapping. A golf clap, maybe. But clapping. So tell me, tell me what you think. Tell me why. Give me some hope. Tell me why I'm wrong and why this is. Show me the master plan. Somebody help me out here. Because we are the Latter Day Saints and we are the new children of Israel. And Israel is to struggle, to submit. So I'm struggling. And with that, thank you. Have a good night. God bless. Like the video, share, and subscribe. Bye.